Hi, this is Juan Garcia. I'm certified professional inspector here with Internashi. Uh, we're gonna do some some tips. We're gonna show you some things that we actually do in real life and business. Hopefully, it can help you guys out there in the real world. Uh, we're gonna do an inspection. It's not gonna be for training for class. So if you see that I don't look at something that judge me too hard, the idea here is to point out some things that happens and, and give you guys some tips. Uh, please follow me as we get started with the inspection. All right, so we're gonna do a roof inspection, uh, but number one, safety. Safety is always first. If you don't feel safe, you do not need to climb on that roof. If it's snowing, if it's icy, do not walk on the roof. Uh, if you're gonna do a visual inspection, put on the report that this is a visual inspection that you did not walk the roof for safety reasons. Uh, on this roof here in particular, we, saw, we noticed here that there's some loose tiles quite throughout the roof. So I'm not gonna walk the entire roof. I'm gonna recommend for a licensed roofer to come and do a further evaluation whether the roof needs to be repaired or does it need to be replaced. Now, depends on the age of the roof, the roof might still have remained a useful life and it might, not just, might only need a repair. So when you talk to your client, let them know, hey, listen, don't panic. Don't think this is a dead deal because you might have a faulty roof. You might be able to have a repair the roof might continue to have remaining useful life. So because you, we have a deficiency in the roof, doesn't mean that you know, you're gonna have to cancel the contract. So uh, we're gonna show you a tool that is gonna be very useful also when you have limited access to, uh, for the roof. Here we have a spectroscope. Uh, you can find this in the Inspector Outlet website, but we're gonna show you here when you don't have access to the roof, it's too high. Uh, we're gonna show you how we can Take a quick look at the roof uh, using here. We have a GoPro camera on this nice tool. I had the cam the phone there with the app where it's a Bluetooth activated so we can see here in the camera, we can see it right on the phone. Now this spectroscope, it goes up to 25 feet high. So it's really cool. And here we don't need to extend it all the way to the end. Now when you use a tool like this, take a note on the report, let it know that it was a visual inspection with the camera. So you were not able to physically test each tile or shingle or whatever you know surface you have on that roof. So using the camera here, we can I can see the roof, I can see the gutters. I can see there's a good amount of debris on the gutters, so we're gonna put a little tip to clean those gutters up. Uh, we can see the chimney exhaust there, and they look like they extended on the right size. Often one of the safety things that we find is that the combustion chimney exhaust for the, for the gas heaters or for the water heaters, they don't extend long enough on the roof. So those are safety things that we have to take a note in the report. But here with this spectroscope, it makes our life a lot easier, sometimes what we need it. We're gonna go ahead and get started inside and continue to share some tips that is gonna be hopefully very useful for you on, out there in the real world. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started with the inspection inside the house. But first, I want to share some tips. Uh, I was in the military, I was a military police. And one thing that we learn uh, when we go to clear a building is that you have to pick a direction. You go left or you go right and you stick to that. Uh, I apply the same principle here in the home inspections. I teach that to my students or to the guys that work with me. Like that, when you go into a direction, you hit that kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom, but you don't miss a location. If you go from one place to another, you run the risk of missing something. Uh, if you also, if you have a customer that has a lot of questions, I tell them, hey, I want to do a good job for you. If you don't mind, please hold those questions or write them down. At the end of my inspection, we'll do a walkthrough and I'll, you know, I can answer any question that you guys have. Of course, my technique might not work for everybody, but this is what we do. And if it works for you, I hope it can be very useful. So let's get started here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on the kitchen inspection. This is not gonna be a full detail inspection in the kitchen, more like some of the tips, some things that you might miss uh, doing an inspection, especially if you're a newer inspector. 
So some of the things that I like to do here, I have a flashlight. It is daylight, I can see all the surface, but however, when you point with the flashlight, the ceiling, you can really see if there's any, any stains, any cracks, you can have a lot more detail when you have a flashlight, even, even through the daylight. Uh, another thing that I can see some of the inspectors miss, especially when they're new, is that they turn the water on, it works, they turn it back off, they don't let it run long enough. You have to let the water run in long enough. Let's say you have a, a, a breakage on the pipe, on the drainage, somewhere outside the house or in another area. If that water doesn't run long enough, it's, you're not gonna see the backup. So you gotta let it run five, 10 minutes. And mainly all the houses, I like to put all the water to run at the same time. Shower, sinks, bathroom, kitchen to make sure that the water pressure is proper in all the rooms. Because sometimes you're gonna see that you have water pressure in the kitchen, you take a shower on, pressure is gone. You wanna make sure that the entire house has enough water pressure. Here, one thing that we should do always is that as soon as you turn the water on, you wanna look underneath. Because if there's a leak, you wanna find about it right away. You don't wanna be, let the water run and start causing additional damage that might not be necessary. While checking here, we're gonna check the garbage disposal. We're gonna check the shutoff valve, the type of plumbing that it comes. And here I can see that there's copper coming out to the shutoff valve, but something especially put with polybutylene, you have to check behind the cabinet somehow or underneath to see what is the source of the plumbing pipe coming in. Uh, so those are little tips Additional things to cover, you know, besides checking the windows, the outlets, every door, every drawer, the countertops, uh, hopefully that things that will help you guys out. All right, so we're gonna do the living room, but one thing you have not seen in this video is my phone. And actually, I use my phone a lot. Usually we take over 100 pictures per inspection. So if you haven't seen it now, it doesn't mean that I don't use it when I'm out there. Average 100, 150, depends on the size of the house. It's the average amount of pictures that we do while inspection. Last thing you wanna do is to go write down your report, whether you write it in the vehicle at the moment of the house or you write it later on, uh, is to know that you forgot something and you need to call the realtor or the seller to come back to the house to take a picture. So it's really important you take plenty of pictures. Don't be shy on pictures. If your phone doesn't have enough memory, I'm sorry to tell you, for this business, you need to get one with a lot of memory because you're gonna have thousands of pictures on your phone. Uh, but here, we're gonna go ahead and inspect the chimney. What we inspect in the chimney, recommendation always do to the clients, make sure that chimney is clear or clean at least once a year. Uh, you always wanna cover yourself. On the chimney here, we're gonna note that it appears that has been recently used. Uh, we're gonna take the flashlight we're gonna look at the access hatch. We're gonna look in there, everywhere inside that chimney. Now, if we don't have visibility all the, all the way uh, to the top, we wanna make sure that we put a note on it. Uh, and we're also gonna put a note that it was not 100% visible due to ashes of the recent activity. But also means that because it's been work, appears to be working, I'm gonna put a little note say that it appeared to be in working condition at time of inspection. Every time we write something in the report, we put a little note that it says at time of inspection because we wanna to explain to our clients that whatever was working the day of the inspection, we cannot guarantee that it's gonna work in the future. So we're gonna take that note uh, when we write the chimney notes in the report. While inspecting the sliding door, uh, I see that there's a safety bar here at the bottom. A lot of people like to use it, this is perfectly fine. However, this does not replace that the actual lock works. So I wanna make sure that we can test the lock here. This lock, it has a visible mechanism. I can see that it works. We're gonna check the rollers. We're gonna check the door in its entirety. So we're gonna make sure that the window, the seals are working all the way across. Uh, we're gonna check on the second level windows there. For some reason we cannot access it, always take a note. Uh, we're gonna go check the window. Again, here we're not gonna be very detailed because we wanna keep it uh, short here. 
On this window here, I can see that some of the seals are missing. I'm gonna put a little note on that. I wanna make sure that we can open the window pan, make sure that it works properly. Quite often, most of the time, I like to do a moisture test on the borders here, make sure there's no water intrusion to the window seals. Or if you have an infrared camera, you can use the infrared, whatever you think might suit best your needs. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and inspect outside. Please, here, follow us. So now we're gonna check some of the electrical system here. Safety is always first. I just removed the cover uh, down here. You shoot in the cover, we take a picture of the label here. There's no brand, no label on it. Put a comment on that. The electrical panel, I learned from electricians always to touch it with the, you know, with the back of your hand. If this thing is live and it shocks you and your hand contracts, you're not gonna get chuckle. It'll, it'll snap it away from the panel. Uh, we have already pre-done some of this, so some of this area already set here so we can make this nicer and easier. Uh, even in the outside, I use the flashlight to make sure that I go from top to bottom, from bottom to top, whichever that I cover every wire here. I want to make sure there's no double taps. If we have copper wiring, cloth wiring, we just really have to go to the electrical everywhere and check the bushings, the knockouts, make sure there's no safety hazard, there's anything live out there. Uh, the breakers, what brand of the breaker is. Check all the training videos from International where we talk about the four point report that it really is going to go into the electrical system, especially for insurance purposes. Uh, but here, you want to check the panel, all the wiring going through. We have the breaker, uh, the fuse here for the AC system. So we're going to check everything out detail by detail. All right, so we have covered some of the part of the inspections in the outside. Please follow me inside. Let's get in there. All right, guys, so when inspecting the bathroom, a few little tips here. Make sure that that ventilator always works. We're gonna flush the toilet a few times, check that shutoff valve on that toilet. Uh, also make sure that it's installed correctly, that it's not loose, that it's not leaking. Same thing with the vanities, that the vanity is installed properly. One thing that I, I'm gonna admit that I forgot a few times when I first started was to check the doors. I would walk into the bathroom, inspect everything, but I would not check if that door closed properly or not. So make sure from the beginning, you go from the beginning, entrance of the bathroom, the doors, check all the walls from the bottom to the top, to the ceiling, outlets, switches, water pressure, water drainage, electricity, that everything gets checked out. Don't miss anything. If you see a little rock, arrow rock, once in a while, you're gonna have somebody that puts an arrow rock to hide or cover a damage on the floor. So when I see an area rug, I always remove the area rug. I wanna make sure that I can inspect what's underneath. Depends what part of the country you are, this might be known as the furnace room, mechanical room, or just the closet with the water heater and the heater system. So we're gonna go ahead and go inside here and show some of the, you know, some of the things that is gonna be helpful. And for me, it's probably more, one of the most important areas to inspect in the house. One of the reasons that I think this is probably one of the most important areas in the house is because there's there's some safety uh, things that are going on here that it always we need to make sure that it is installed properly. Uh, quite often we see we hear accidents that happen, uh, unfortunately, where people have passed away because of gas leaks, uh, and this is one of the locations that it might start. Uh, the combustion chimney here, the, this piping system. We really need to make sure that it's working properly. If you're doing an inspection and you do not understand the mechanical system, let's say they have some high tech equipment or something electronic that you're not used to it, let the buyer know, write it down, recommend another professional to do it. Nowadays with solar systems and digital panels, there's a lot of systems that we might not be familiar with. And we're not here to be the know-it-all guys. So if there's something that you do not know, take a note, let somebody know to, you know, if you see something suspicious, to bring somebody else and check it out. But here we're gonna go ahead and do an inspection here in the gas water heater. Uh, you know, the cold water, the hot water, the lines, make sure they're connected right. Uh, this drainage system is connected all the way down to the drain. So we're gonna use the flashlight here this water heater looks pretty good. There's no rust at the bottom. 
It doesn't have a pan, but because it have the drainage line all the way to the drainage, we're gonna leave it as that. We're gonna check the pilot system. This is where the gas goes on, on the water heater. We're gonna make sure that it's working properly. Little light here on the entrance. It's lighting okay. Uh, no, always put on, the, on your report. How old is the water heater? This one is for 2007. So this water heater is a few years old. I'll tell my clients always how old it is. And what is the average useful life? Uh, I believe for some states, it is a requirement to write down the age and remain in useful life of the equipment. Uh, AC system, mechanical system, the piping, the electrical, you really wanna go through everything. When you go into the room first, make sure there's no loose wires that you can get shocked. So safety is always first. Make sure that you're well protected before you start inspecting the area. All right, so another tip that we have here when inspecting water heaters or HVAC systems, I have on my iPhone here. It's a website, it's called buildingcenter.org. Uh, here on that website, you can check the age of the system. It tells you what uh, brand, you put what brand it is. And it'll tell you depends on the serial number and model number. It'll tell you exactly how you can figure out the age if the system doesn't have a clear label with the manufacturer date on it. It's a, it's a tool that I always have on hand. It makes my life a lot easier. Here we're gonna inspect the bedroom. Uh, really quick notes. I have the ladder on the door, so I'm gonna inspect the door later. I like to use the flashlight, even if it's daylight. We're gonna really see some of the things in the ceiling. I can see the different amount of popcorn in some areas. While looking at the ceiling, I can see here there's a patch. So when I go to the attic, I really want to check on top of this area. I want to make sure that the sheeting above this area here that is, I can see it has a prior repair. It doesn't have a current leak. And we'll do a moisture test on that wood also if possible. Uh, so we're going to check the ceiling, the walls, top to bottom. If there's too much furniture in the house, always take that note, let it know that some areas might not, were not accessible due to amount of furniture. Uh, and we're also gonna test the outlets, the lighting here. Gonna check the floor, the carpet, this carpet looks pretty good, but we're gonna look all the way around. We have the electrical tester, so we can test every outlet in the house. We're gonna check all the windows. So I'm about to go ahead and get up on the attic to get started. But I wanna share a little story first, something that really happened. Um, one of the guys that was working with me while he was doing the termite inspection, he opened the attic access panel, and as soon as he opened the panel, a rat jumped into his head, ran off. He was already afraid of rats, so now for every inspection, he wears a baseball cap. Nobody can make him take that thing off, especially when going to the attic. So after his experience, one of the things that I do is that I always knock on it. Now, if I have my customer with me and I don't want the customer noticing that I'm knocking in the door, like get out of the way because I have found many critters up there, I'll move the panel axis a little bit, just enough to make some noise if there's a critter up there. They can hear that I'm going in so they have time to move away because we don't want to go into confrontation. <laughs> All right, so now when going to the attic, I always want to make sure that I have my glove. I have enough wood splints in through my hands. And I think the attic besides the mechanical room, furnace room, is a very important area because you can see, sometimes you can see a roof that it looks good in a visible way. But when you go to the attic and you check that sheathing, that's where you're really sure that there's no water or moisture coming through the roof. So we're not gonna record up there today, but uh, we're gonna do a very detailed inspection in the attic. Now for your inspection report, take a note, if there's, if you don't have visibility of 100% of the attic, write it down, let your client know, you know, I have some visibility restraint for whatever reason, due to insulation, due to lack of access. Um, but if you cannot inspect 100% of the attic, especially the sheeting to make sure there's not moisture or leak, uh, you want to disclose that on the report. You want to make sure that somebody doesn't come after you because you didn't inspect something that you did not let them know. All right, so thank you for watching us. Hope that we have been able to share some tips uh, that will help you if you're getting started in the business. If you've already been in the business, some things that are refreshers or maybe some things that it will help you to improve your business, take it to the next level. Uh, talking about taking it to the next level, 
We're planning to continue to do some more trainings and share some ideas and business tips here at International. So please uh, stay tuned for future events.